hi guys i hope the audio is fine i'll just check my audio and then li- uh, start the live stream continuing our discussion of the history of indian philosophy uh the five originally five volume now uh, condensed uh, condensed into three volumes uh written, written by dr shudendranath dasgupta uh, when i say condensed into three volumes i don't mean abridged it's the full version but in the five volumes two books were a little thinner so they turned it into three thick tomes which is why it has come out turned out to be three volumes now from a new publisher called a new version of this publication by rupa publications let me just check if the audio is coming fine yeah fine so let's continue our discussion of this fascinating book fascinating piece of research work this book was this volume 1 was written by uh, written into it 1920 2021 sometime like that it released in 1922 okay so today the the section we start today is called growth of philosophic literature but before that i'd like to do a bit of a uh, bit of uh, recap as well let's see so which which we started chapter 4 last day chapter 4 is called general observations on the systems of indian philosophy and the first sub chapter was in what sense is a history of indian philosophy possible because there are issues with chronology there are issues with uh, uniformity because a lot of things happen parallelly they are not uh, simultaneously and parallelly it's not like one philosoph- one school of philosophy is coming after the other all of them are evolving uh, simultaneously so it's all very confusing so i have underlined some things so let's just go through them uh, the sutras of the vedanta system known as sariraka sutras or brahman brahma sutras of Uh, Badrayana, for example, were of so ambiguous a nature that they gave rise to more than half a dozen divergent interpretations, each one of which claimed to be the only faithful one. Such was the high esteem and respect in which these writers of the sutras were held by later writers, that that w- they were held in such high esteem that whenever they had any new speculations to offer. these were reconciled with the doctrines of one or other of the existing systems and put down as faithful interpretations faithful interpretations of the system in the form of commentaries such was the hold of these systems these these philosophical systems upon scholars that all orthodox teachers since the foundation of the systems of philosophy belong to one or other of these schools they did not say that we are making a new school of thought completely they said that we are part of this particular school of thought their pupils were thus naturally brought up in accordance with the views of their teachers obviously all the independence of their thinking was limited and enchained by the faith of the school to which they were attached instead of producing a succession of freelance thinkers having their own systems to propound and establish establish india had brought brought forth schools of pupils who carried the traditionary views of particular systems from generation to generation who claimed and expounded them and and defended them against the attacks of other rival schools which they constantly attacked in order to establish the superiority of the system to which they adhered now these words like ad- attack etc attack defend these are obviously harsher words but all it means here is intellectually attacking them and in, and intellectually defending them okay okay uh bhojpuri aesthetics is saying think because of the timing indian audiences are <laughs> sleep thank you though uh, actually i do it at this time because first of all it's comfortable for me but even if i wanted i could do it at at 9 pm 10 pm at those times but during those hours all the other indic tubers are who are like insanely important and and gi- giants in their own right they are online at the same time abhijit chavra sanjay dikshit advaita kala kushal mehra all of them are online at, at that time so i've seen that it's absolutely useless for me to come and discuss uh, deep uh, concepts and read out from books uh, at at 9 and 10 pm so i'm hoping that if some students and people who uh, go to colleges the next day and so won't go to colleges the next day those people are online and they can hang out and uh, discuss these stuff with me and and maybe someone who is who, who is living in a country where it's not night time right now so to take an example the nyaya system of philosophy consisting of a number of half sentences or sutras is attributed to gautama 
also called Akshapada. Akshapada. The earliest commentary on these sutras. So all all uh, systems of philosophical thought that are coming about in India apparently then are commentaries on the previous. But the commentary itself helps evolve the thought. Okay, it's not like you have to be original for just originality's sake. You can't just uh, say that okay, you guys eat food, I eat shit, and therefore I have come up with a fascinating new idea. No, it's, it's it doesn't work like that. They are building upon their previous guru's works, and that's why there's a beautiful lineage of. Uh, of thought. Yeah, Ninar is saying I'm outside India for me. The timing works pretty great. Yeah. So, uh, so all our commentaries are uh, all our philosophical works are essentially commentaries on something that already happened. It and all of this, uh, pro uh, based on the history we know so far, everything starts from Rig Veda. After after that, everything is is a commentary on on the previous thing, but at the same time. When when there are uh, when when a little number of significant philosophies and books uh, have already been written, after that even the commentaries become parallel and, uh, parallel and uh, simultaneous. Simultaneously, this different kinds of interpretations are having of Rig Veda, Upanishads, all of those things, all the uh, uh, sutras, shastras. The earliest commentary on these sutras, called the Vatsyayana Bhashya was written by Vatsyayana. Bhashya means commentary. Uh, even uh, sports commentaries, live commentaries called Dhara Bhashya in Bengali. This work was sharply criticized by the Buddhist Dinnaga, Dinnaga. And to answer these criticisms of Uddyotakara, answer these criticisms, Uddyotakara wrote a commentary on this commentary <laughs> called the Bhashya, Vat Bhashya Vattika. As time went on, the original force of this work was lost, and it failed to maintain the old dignity of the school. At this, Vachaspati Mishra wrote a commentary called Vartika Tat Tatparyatika. Tat Tatpari, okay, Vartika Tatparyatika. On this second commentary, where he tried to refute all objections against the Nyaya system made by other rival schools and particularly by the Buddhists. This commentary called Nyaya Tatpar Tatparyatika had another commentary called Nyaya Tatparyatika Parishuddhi, written by the great Udayana. The commentary and another commentary called, this commentary had another commentary called Nyaya Nibandha Prakasha, written by uh, Vradhamana, the son of the illustrious Gangesha. This again had another commentary called Vardha Manendu, Vardha Manendu, upon it by Padvanabha Mishra. And this again had another named Nyaya Tatparya Mandana by Shankar Mishra. The names of Vatsyayana, Vatsyayana, Vachaspati and Udayana are indeed very great, but even they contented themselves by writing commentaries on commentaries and did not try to formulate any original system. Even Shankara, probably the greatest man of India after Buddha, spent his life in writing commentaries on the Brahma Sutras, the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. As a, as a system passed on, it had to meet unexpected opponents and troublesome criticisms for which it was not in the least prepared. Its adherents had therefore to use all their ingenuity and subtlety in support of their own propositions and to discover the defects of the rival schools that attacked them. A system as it was originally formulated in the sutras had probably but few problems to solve. But as it fought its way in the teeth of opposition of other schools, it had to offer consistent opinions on other problems in which the original views were more or less in, involved but to which no attention had been given before. Like Kind of like what we are doing today with India's uh, Hindu texts, right? Because it's not like they had solutions to everything, they had universal archetypal uh, recommendations and solutions but we are finding out and uh, picking out data from those texts to say that, no, no, see, this is relevant to even today. But maybe th for that particular thing, that text was not written. We are having to reinterpret those things and uh, at least bring out those things and, and point out to people that see, this was in, mentioned in Veda, this was mentioned in, uh, in, in Upanishads, kind of like that. The contributions of the successive commentators serve, serve to make each system more and more complete in all its parts and stronger and stronger to enable it to hold its own successfully against the opposition and attacks of the rival schools. A system in the sutras is weak and shapeless as a newborn babe, 
but if we take it long uh, we, but if we take it along with its developments down to the beginning of the 17th century it appears as a fully developed man strong and harmonious in all its limbs this is a very important point actually because uh, at least according to this particular scholar shurendranath dasgupta he is saying that whatever the <coughs> uh, sutras and ideas and philosophies that were born uh, in the in the ancient times they kind of meet their uh, pinnacle they come they kind of arrive at their peak in the 1700s that is when the best work has happened then uh, according to according to this author the most completeness was uh, was achieved in the 1700s it is therefore not possible to write any history of successive philosophies of india but it is necessary that each system should be studied and interpreted in all the growth it has acquired through the successive ages of history from its conflicts with other rival systems as one whole in the history of indian philosophy we have no place for for systems which had their importance only so long as they lived and were then forgotten or remembered only as targets of criticism they are not given importance in indian philosophy each system grew and developed by the untiring energy of its adherents through all the successive ages of history and the history of this growth is a history of its conflicts no study of any system no study of any indian system is therefore adequate unless it is taken throughout all the growth uh, uh, throughout all the growth it attained by the work of its champions the commentators whose selfless toil for it had for it had uh, kept it living through the ages of history all that has to be uh, counted under the concept called history of indian philosophy history of indian philosophy does not mean one particular uh, school of thought uh, binay singh is saying bro you also start using chat gpt yeah i did uh, two or three videos from chat gpt then i added my own stuff as well uh, that uh, hinduism is uh, breaking down casteism that video was done from chat gpt only i forced chat gpt to admit that hindu uh, hindutva is great that video is called hindutva destroys casteism you all should actually keep doing that doing that in your free time force it where where there there is uh, pro indic pro hindu data frame the questions in a way so that more and more it learns accordingly that uh, hindutva is a great movement and it's a great thing it will remember those things all it has been fed is with 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 scholarly papers that that hindutva is a, is a vile evil thing but if you feed it if you frame the questions in such a way that it's forced to admit in the answers that hindutva is great then that's what it will rem- remember and that's how it will uh, give uh, uh, talk about hindutva in future as well now the sub chapter today a recap just ended so whoever has joined now uh, you are lucky this is where we start our to, uh, live stream uh, from from a new new sub chapter it's called growth of the philosophic literature it is difficult to say how the systems were originally formulated and what were the influences that led to it we know that a spirit of philosophic enquiry had already begun in the days of the earliest upanishads the spirit of that enquiry was that the final essence or truth was the atman the final essence or final truth was the atman that a search after it was our highest duty and that until we are ultimately merged in it in the atman we can only feel this truth and remain uncontented that is unsatisfied we can feel we will feel unsatisfied with everything else and say that it is not the truth we want it is not the truth we want neti neti philosophical enquiries were however continuing in circles other than those of the upanishads thus the buddha who closely followed the early upanishad period spoke of and enumerated 62 kinds of heresies okay this is important the buddha who close who closely followed the early upanishad period spoke of and enumerated 62 kinds of heresies and these can hardly be traced in the upanishads the jain activities were also probably going on contem- contemporaneously but in the upanishads no references to these can be found we may thus reasonably suppose that there were different forms of philosophic enquiry in spheres other than those of the upanishad sages other than those of the uh, upanishad sages of which we have but scanty records it seems probable that the hindu systems of thought originated among the sages who thought who though attached chiefly to the upanishad circles used to take note of the dis- discussions and views 
of the antagonistic and heretical philosophic circles buddhism jainism in the assemblies of these sages and their pupils the views of the heretic circles were probably discussed and refuted so it continued probably for some time when some illustrious member of the assembly such as gautama or kanada collected the purport of these discussions on various topics and problems filled up many of the missing links classified and arranged these in the forms of a system of philosophy and recorded it in sutras these sutras were intended probably for people who had attended the elaborate oral discussions and thus could easily follow the meaning of the suggestive phrases contained in the aphorisms the sutras thus contain sometimes allusions references to the views of the rival schools and indicate the way in which they could be refuted मैनुअल दे रहा है डिबेट करने का द कॉमेंटेटर्स वर पोजेस्ट ऑफ द जनरल ड्रिफ्ट ऑफ द डिफरेंट डिस्कशन एल्यूडेड टू एंड कन्वेड फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम जनरेशन टू ओके एंड कन्वेड फ्रॉम जनरेशन टू जनरेशन थ्रू एन अनब्रोकन चेन ऑफ सक्सेशन ऑफ टीचर्स एंड पीपल्स दे वर हाउ एवर फ्री टू सप्लीमेंट दीज ट्रेडिशनरी एक्सप्लेनेशन विद देर ओन व्यूज और टू मॉडिफाई एंड इवन सप्रेस सच ऑफ द ट्रेडिशनरी व्यूज विथ विच दे डिड नॉट अग्री or which they found it difficult to maintain wow brilliant oppositions from the opposing schools often made it necessary for them to offer solutions to new problems unthought of before but put forward by by some illustrious adherent of a rival school what a great time to be alive huh in those days i mean uh, just of course everyone did not have the capability to do these debates but there was some interesting stuff going on such interesting debates on an on an academic and intellectual level going on uh bhojpuri aesthetics is saying page number uh you can't count them on fingers i guess uh, uh page number mera ye page hai page 66 how uh, how total how many systems were there ऐसा तो कोई नंबर दिया है बट आई डोंट थिंक नंबर पता भी है किसी को आयरनी इज दैट यू नो विवेक देव रॉय वॉज सेइंग दैट देयर आर अबाउट थ्री फोर लैक इन संस्कृत टेक्स्ट इवन अन अन ट्रांसलेटेड टू दिस डे कितना तो मिला ही नहीं कितना तो जला दिया और कितना ट्रांसलेट ही नहीं हुआ है अब तक विनय सिंह इज सेंग आयरनी इज दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल हु आर पोलिटिकल कॉमेंटेटर डो नॉट इवन लिव इन भारत लाइक मोहक मंगल एंड ध्रुव राठी Uh. so in order to reconcile these these new solutions with the other parts of the system the commentators never hesitated to offer such uh, slight modifications of the doctrines as could harmonize them into a complete whole these elaborations or modifications generally developed the traditionary system but did not affect in uh, okay these uh, elaborations or modifications generally developed the traditionary system so it it further built upon the traditionary system but did not affect any serious change gradual change hoga did not affect any serious change in the system as expounded by the uh, older teachers for the new opponents always bound themselves to the explanations of the old teachers and never contradicted them okay i uh, let me just uh, repeat again how beautiful this concept is that you are not saying that everything that came before you either has to be perfect neither are they saying that everything that has happened up till now is absolute shit is absolutely useless so they are not being completely not job conservatives here they are not being comp- completely not job progressives here they are saying okay what we have is is beautiful let's build upon this idea they would only interpret them to suit their own ideas or say new things only in those cases where the older teacher had remained silent it is not therefore possible to describe the growth of any system by treating the contributions of the individual commentators separately okay it is therefore possible to describe the growth of any system by treating the contributions of the individual commentators separately it is not therefore possible okay so in koi bhi commentator ka baat individually dekh ke koi fayda nahi hai not possible to describe the growth of any system by treating the contributions of the individual commentators separately we all we, we will always have to look at them uh, in the chrono in the chronological order and uh, and how it was built upon built upon built upon uh, which idea came because of being built upon uh, some some other previous idea this would only mean unnecessary repetition 
except when there is a uh, specially new when except when there is a specially new development the system is to be interpreted on the basis of the joint work of the commentators treating their contributions as forming one whole ah this is this is tough except when there is a specially new development ye hai exception tab the the system is to be interpreted on the basis of the joint work of the commentators treating their contributions as forming one whole the fact that each system had to contend with other rival systems in order to hold its own has left its permanent mark upon all the philosophic literatures of india which are always written in the form of disputes <laughs> where the writer is supposed to be always faced with objections from rival schools to whatever he has got to say at each step he supposes certain objections put forth against him which he answers and points out the defects of the objector or shows that the objection itself is ill founded that the objection is baseless it is thus through interminable byways of objections counter objections and their answers that the writer can wend his way to his destination most of most of often the objections of the rival schools are referred to in so brief a manner that those only who that those only who know the views can catch them because it was see these texts were not written for for the general audience they were written for scholars these were all let's say phd level works they were not class 10 11 books that were supposed to be understood by everyone so they they don't bother wasting their time explaining the counter view with with uh, with uh, almost half a book now so they just say you know they said this now hear my counter and they go on writing the rest of the book <laughs> to add to these difficulties to add to these difficulties the sanskrit style of of most of the commentaries is so condensed and different from literary sanskrit and and aims so much at precision and brevity कितना छोटा लिख सकते हैं लीडिंग टू द यूज ऑफ टेक्निकल वर्ड्स करंट इन द डाइवर्स सिस्टम दैट अ स्टडी ऑफ दीज बिकम्स ऑफ एन इम्पॉसिबल विदाउट द एड ऑफ एन एक्सपर्ट प्रिसेप्टर इट इज डिफिकल्ट देयर फॉर फॉर ऑल हु आर नॉट वाइडली रेड इन ऑल द डिफरेंट सिस्टम्स टू फॉलो एनी एडवांस्ड वर्क ऑफ एनी पर्टिकुलर सिस्टम एज द डिलिबरेशन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर सिस्टम आर एक्सप्रेस इन सच क्लोज इंटर कनेक्शन विद द व्यूज ऑफ अदर सिस्टम्स that these can hardly be understood without them this part is very important because you see that uh, people who are uh, usually uh, saying uh, uh, criticizing uh, hinduism left and right all, all day most of them have uh, don't understand sanskrit at, at all some of them understand sanskrit a little but they are not sanskritists so see how th that plays into here okay this book is written by a scholar who is fluent in sanskrit he is a sanskritist himself such a person is saying बहुत कठिन काम है और जिन लोगों को संस्कृत आता नहीं है वो कॉन्फिडेंटली बोलते फिर रहे हैं कि अरे हिंदुइज्म मारो गोली क्या है उसमें सब कुछ एंटी वुमेन एंटी शुद्रा ये सभी है हिंदुइज्म में तो रिमेंबर आई आई ऑलवेज ब्रिंग दिस एग्जांपल अप देर वाज अ वाइट प्रोफेसर डिबेटिंग राजीव मल्होत्रा दैट हैज मिलियंस ऑफ व्यूज दैट दैट वीडियो ही वॉज सेंग दैट वाई डिड यू से दिस वाई डिड यू से दैट एंड वेन ही वॉज इंट्रोड्यूसिंग हिमसेल्फ दैट वाइट प्रोफेसर ही सेट दैट आई एम अ लिंग्विस्टिक्स प्रोफेसर i teach a bit of urdu a bit of hindi bit of urdu bit of english bit of sanskrit everything he knows all these languages yahan pe log pura zindagi khatam karke sanskrit samajh nahi pa rahe wo bit of hindi bit of urdu bit of sanskrit sab samajh gaya california mein baith ke jiska mother tongue hai english kya genius aadmi hai each system of india has grown at least in particular epochs or or fir wo sarcastically uh, rajiv malhotra ko bol raha hai ke yeah yeah we'll have our purva paksha फिर उसका उसका कंक्लूजन है कि हिंदुइज्म टीचर्स ऑल ब्रदरहुड एंड लव देयर इज नो नो कॉज फॉर पॉइंटिंग आउट हु इज द आउटसाइडर टू दिस ग्रुप ईच सिस्टम ऑफ इंडिया हैज ग्रोन एट लीस्ट इन पर्टिकुलर इपॉक्स इन रिलेशन टू एंड इन ऑपोजिशन टू द ग्रोथ ऑफ अदर सिस्टम्स ऑफ थॉट आह व्हाट अ ब्यूटीफुल कांसेप्ट हर सिस्टम ऑफ इंडिया हैज ग्रोन आइदर इन ऑपोजिशन टू टू द ग्रोथ ऑफ अनदर सिस्टम और इन रिलेशन टू अनदर सिस्टम ऑफ थॉट एंड टू बी अ थरो स्टूडेंट ऑफ इंडियन फिलोसफी one should study all the systems in their mutual opposition and relation from the earliest times to a period at which they ceased to grow and came to a stop bahut important cheez hai ye agar indian philosophy samajhna hai to pura pura ka pura shuru se ant tak to samajhna hi hai which is approximately he says is the 1700s that's when 
philosophy indian philosophy uh, stops evolving anymore i guess uh, we could say that now it's evolving some more with with people like jsi deepak and and sn balaganga thara but uh, that because that is the need of the hour but uh, we have to know the entire chronology we have to uh, know where every idea is coming from which and if it's coming from this particular place where where is this place coming from we have to know that chronology and relation from the earliest uh, times to a period at which they cease to grow oh and here be important hai not just relations all the mutual oppositions as well to be a thorough student of indian philosophy one should study all the systems in their mutual opposition and relation how are they associated how are they parallel how are they opposed to each other ye sab kuch janna hai a purpose for which a work like the present one may only be regarded as forming a preliminary introduction so he is saying je ye maine jo kaam kiya hai ye five volume history of indian philosophy jo books hai ye sirf preliminary introduction hai which is our three volume now ye hai size ek book ka aisa teen book hai jo he he is saying there is a preliminary introduction Besides the sutras and their commentaries, there are also independent treatises on the systems in verse called karikas. Karikas. I never heard of this. This is the first time I am hearing this word. Besides the sutras and their commentaries, there are also independent treatises on the systems in verse called karikas, which try to summarize the important topics of any system in a succinct manner. Acha, summarization of topics. इसको कारिका कहते हैं सिंक्ट मैनर द सामख्य कारिका मे बी मैंशन एज अ वर्क ऑफ दिस काइंड इन एडिशन टू दीज देर वर ऑल्सो लॉन्ग डिसर्टेशन कॉमेंट्रीज और जनरल ऑब्जर्वेश सिस्टम रिटर्न इन वर्सेज कॉल्ड द वार्तिकाज द श्लोका वार्तिका ऑफ कुमारिला और द वार्तिका ऑफ ऑफ सुरेशवरा मे बी मैंशन एज एग्जाम्पल्स ऑल दीज ऑफ कोर्स हैड देयर कॉमेंट्रीज टू एक्सप्लेन दैम In addition to these, there were also advanced treatises on systems in prose. अच्छा ये सब था verses में मतलब कविता के form में अब prose में भी है In addition to these, there were also advanced treatises on the systems in prose, in which the writers either uh, nominally followed some selected sutras or proceeded independently of them. Of the former class, the Nyaya Manjari of Jayanta, Nyaya Manjari. न्याय मंजरी ऑफ जयंता मे बी मैंशन एज एन एग्जाम्पल एंड ऑफ द लैटर द प्रश्तपदा भाष्य द अद्वैत सिद्धि ऑफ मधुसूदना मधुसूदना सरस्वती और द वेदांत परिभाषा ऑफ धर्म धर्मज धर्मजध्वरिंद्र धर्मजध्वरिंद्र ओके all these of course had their commentaries to explain them in addition to these were also advanced treatises on systems in prose okay so examples of uh, prose where writers uh, just nominally followed some selected sutra iska example hai nyay manjari of of jayanta and uh, where where the writer proceeds independently of any sutra uska example hai uh, prashastapada uh, prashastapada bhashya the advaita siddhi of madhusudana uh, saraswati and the vedanta paribhasha of dharmaraj dharmaraj dvarindra the more remarkable of these treatises were of a masterly nature the more remarkable of these treatises were of a masterly nature in which the writers represented the systems they adhered to in a highly forcible and logical manner by dint of their own great mental powers and genius they also had their commentaries to explain and elaborate them the period of the growth of the philosophic literatures of india begins from about bc 500 about the time of buddha and practically ends in the later half of the 17th century though even now some minor publications are seen to come out yeah this is what he is saying that some publications so abhi some kuch kaam to abhi bhi ho raha hai Yeah, he is saying this in 1922 now this sub chapter has ended another new sub chapter is starting it's called the indian systems of philosophy 
let's see what are the comments going on oh abhay has joined uh abhay namaskar uh shravya is saying uh, this would ha uh, this would happen if the khalistani dream comes true and then soon our southern states would get separated from india hindus are dormant everywhere yeah and hindus and even aadhe log to devout hindus hain nahi aur jo devout hindus hain unke dimag mein bhi bahut डॉट्स ज्वाइन करने का बहुत इशू है बंगाल में साउथ इंडिया में जैसे कि एवरी वन इज अ डिवाउट हिंदू बट नो वन फील्स द नीड टू कंजर्व सेव हिंदुज्म और सेव हिंदूज दे डोंट इवन सी द थ्रेट फ्रॉम हिंदूज बिकॉज दे हैव रेड सच बैड हिस्ट्री ओके द इंडियन सिस्टम ऑफ फिलोजॉफी द हिंदूज क्लासीफाई द सिस्टम ऑफ फिलोजॉफी इन टू टू क्लासेज namely the nastika and the astika the nastika na asti it is not nasti means it is not the nastika views are those which neither regard the vedas as infallible nor try to establish their own validity on their authority okay so they are not saying they are saying that uh, vedas to bahut supreme kuch hai bhi nahi or and neither they are saying that we are an authority on vedas they are saying they are saying vedas is not important these are principally three in number the buddhist jaina and the charvaka dastika mata of orthodox schools dastika mata or orthodox schools are are six in number samkhya yoga vedanta mimamsha nyaya and vaisheshika generally known as the six systems or saddarshana saddarshana okay i need to remember these names so buddhist jain and charvaka are the nastik schools of thought and uh, the six uh, astik schools of thought were samkhya yoga vedanta mimamsha nyaya and vaisheshika generally known as the six systems so i intend to read up on all of these and then decide which school of thought i belong to so far i'm pretty happy with at least the upanishad way of interpreting the vedas the samkhya is uh, is ascribed to a mythical kapila mythical kapila okay so he is said to have come up with the samkhya school of thought but the earliest works on the subject are probably now lost the yoga system is attributed to patanjali hey, this i have to read as soon as possible yoga sutras of patanjali everyone thinks yoga is just about stretching and doing warm ups yoga ka exact philosophy kya hai I have to understand. The yoga system is attributed to Patanjali, and the original sutras are called Patanjala Yoga Sutras. The general metaphysical position of these two systems, the Patanjali and and Samkhya, with regard to soul, nature, cosmology, and the final goal, is almost the same. And the difference lies in this that the yoga system acknowledges a god, Ishvara, as distinct from Atman. I see. and lays much importance on certain mystical practices commonly known as yoga practices this is why uh, american right wingers think yoga is evil uh, and lays much importance on certain mystical practices for the achievement of liberation such as yoga practices whereas the samkhya denies the existence of ishvara and thinks that sincere philosophic thought and culture are sufficient to produce the true conviction of the truth and thereby bring about लिबरेशन आ हा हा क्या कॉन्सेप्ट है ओफ सामख्या आई हैड नो आइडिया सामख्या और योगा में इतना सटल डिफरेंस था आई आई हैव ऑलवेज हर्ड द कॉन्सेप्ट सामख्या योगा सामख्या योगा आई थॉट सामख्या एंड योगा वर सेम लेट मी जस्ट मार्क दिस सामख्या वर्सेस योगा द डिफरेंसेस Okay I'll just read this part once again So what's the basic difference between samkhya and yoga The general metaphysical position of these two systems with regard to soul nature cosmology and the final goal is almost the same and the difference lies in this that the yoga system acknowledges a god or ishvara as distinct from the atman and lays much importance on certain mystical practices commonly known as yoga practices for the achievement of liberation whereas the samkhya denies the existence of ishvara and thinks that sincere philosophic thought and culture are sufficient 
to produce the true conviction of the truth and thereby bring about liberation samkhya it is probable that the system of samkhya associated with kapila and the yoga system associated with patanjali are but two divergent modifications of an original samkhya school of which we now get only references here and there acha samkhya used to be something of a mother uh, philosophy jisse samkhya aur yoga bhag ho gaya and usko refer kiya jata hai magar kisi ko pata nahi hai ki hai kahan pe ye original samkhya school of thought that is the same case with with uh, arthashastra as well uh, people found arthashastra in i think the early 1900s i think in the first decade of 1900 okay so uske pehle se everyone knew that there is something called arthashastra and how was that because uh, in other hindu ancient hindu texts people saw that it was something was mentioned about Arth- arthashastra everyone used to cite or refer to something called arthashastra written by a person called chanakya no one ha- had the actual manuscripts then in 1900s in i think in chennai in a uh, library the librarian found out and read that oh my god this seems like arthashastra <laughs> that's how arthashastra was discovered these systems therefore though generally counted as two should be more properly be looked upon as two different schools of the same samkhya system i see one may be called the kapila samkhya and the other patanjala samkhya so so far i see that i i associate my, myself with kapila samkhya i don't have to be an atheist nor am i a charvaka i am a i am a kapila samkhya adherent feels nice to say that the purva mimamsha from the root man to think rational conclusions wo yahan se aaya hai man mimamsha mimamsa the purva mimamsa cannot properly be spoken of as a system of philosophy it is a systematized systematized code of principles in accordance with which the vedic texts are to be interpreted for supposes of sacrifices patanjala samkhya the vedic texts were used as mantras or incantations for sacrifices and people often disputed as to the relation of words in a sentence or their mutual relative or their mutual relative importance with reference to the general drift of the sentence there were also differences of view with regard to the uh, meaning of a sentence the use to which it may be applied as a mantra it, its relative importance or the exact nature of its connection with other similar sentences in a Com- complex vedic context the mimamsha formulated some principles according to which one could arrive at rational and uniform solutions for all these difficulties acha this is what is the contribution of the mimamsha shastra which is why in bengali mimamsha means uh an a, a, a conclusion or a closure to a conflict isko bengali mein mimamsha bola jata hai ke acha decision ho gaya ye problem khatam hua so the mimamsha formulated some principles according to which one could arrive at rational and uniform solutions for all these difficulties preliminary to these its main objects uh it it in, uh, preliminary to these its main objects it indulges in speculations with regard to the external world soul perception inference the validity of the vedas or the like for in order that a man might perform sacrifices with mantras a definite order of the universe and its relation to man or the position and nature of the mantras of the veda must be demonstrated and established though its interest in such abstract speculations is is but secondary acha to ye iska primary kaam to nahi hai its interest in such abstract speculations uh, even though it's secondary yet it briefly discusses these in order to prepare a rational ground for its doctrine of the mantras and their practical utility for man acha this will be interesting to know kyun yagya important hai kyun ye mantras chant karna important hai uska kuch explanation shayad humko milega mimamsha mein vinay singh i beg to differ here here you are saying that the day bihari hindus become intellectual hindu like sri aurobindo uh, bihar will be different altogether now bihar do ritual or chhat puja as the, as the same purpose a muslim do their ritual wo usse bhi nahi hoga because see bengal bengal tumhare paas mein hai bengal mein sab intellectual hindu hi hain bahut padhai bhi karte hain sab sab pratha sab vidhi ke bare mein bahut sochte bhi hai ye kyunki ye ke ye 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 kyun kare kaise karna chahiye 
करना भी है सब करते हैं फिर भी सेम हाल है आई वुड से चलो तुम लोगों का एटलीस्ट प्रैक्टिस तो हो रहा है प्रैक्टिस करते रहो इकोनॉमी जब ठीक ठाक हो जाएगा धर्म खुद ब खुद और भी बढ़ता हुआ चले चलेगा तुम लोगों का तो इकोनॉमी का प्रॉब्लम है ना इतने सालों से सिर्फ चोर के बाद चोर चोर के बाद चोर चोर के बाद चोर चीफ मिनिस्टर बन रहा है तो इकोनॉमी तो गड्ढे में चला गया है इसलिए लोगों को और भी फिलोसॉफिकली धर्म सोचने का आ, समय कहाँ है तो थोड़ा इकोनॉमी ठीक हो जाने दो कोई अच्छा सी एम लाओ बाकी सब ठीक हो जाएगा हमारा तो ये है कि इकोनॉमी ठीक होने से भी ये सब होगा कि नहीं वो बहुत बड़ा क्वेश्चन है सो इट इज ओनली सो फार एज देर आर दीज प्रिलिमिनरी डिस्कशन इन द मीमांशा दैट इट मे बी कॉल्ड सिस्टम ऑफ फिलोसॉफी इट्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड मैक्सिम्स फॉर द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द इम्पोर्ट ऑफ वर्ड्स अच्छा इट्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड मैक्सिम्स इसके लिए फॉर द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द इम्पोर्ट ऑफ वर्ड्स एंड सेंटेंसेज है लीगल वैल्यू इवन टू दिस डे The sutras of Mimamsha are attributed to Jaimini and Sabara. Uh, Jaimini and Sabara wrote a bhashya upon it. The two great names in the history of Mimamsha literature are after Jaimini and Sabara are Kumarila Bhatta and his pupil Prabhakara, who criticized the opinions of his master so much that the master used to call him Guru <laughs> Master in sarcasm. And to this day, his opinions pass as Guru Mata. गुरु मत नॉट गुरु माता गुरु मत गुरु का मत पास एज गुरु मत वेर एज द व्यूज ऑफ कुमारीला भट्टा पास एज भट्ट मत ओके भट्ट मत का सूत्र भट्ट मत बोला जाता है भट्ट मत का स्टूडेंट का एक्सप्लेनेशन गुरु मत बोला जाता है बिकॉज कुमारीला भट्टा हिमसेल्फ यूज टू सरकेस्टिकली कॉल हिज स्टूडेंट गुरु क्योंकि इतना वो क्रिटिसाइज करता था अपने गुरु को वट अ ब्यूटिफुल कॉन्सेप्ट वट ब्यूटिफुल टाइम्स ऑफ भारतवर्ष हाँ इट मे नॉट बी आउट ऑफ प्लेस टू मैंशन हियर दैट हिंदू लॉ और स्मृति accepts without any reservation the maxims and principles settled and formulated by the mimamsha i see so manusmriti has to be in accordance with uh, with with mimamsha shastra then or or maybe the later smritis okay the vedanta sutras also called uttar mimamsha written by badrayana otherwise known as the brahma sutras form the original authoritative work of vedanta the work vedanta means end of the veda that is the upanishads and the vedanta sutras are so acha ye to important hai the vedanta sutras also called uttar mimamsha written by badrayana otherwise known as the brahma sutras form the original authoritative work of vedanta the word vedanta means end of the veda that is upanishads and the uh, vedanta sutras are so called as as they are but uh, as they are but a summarized statement of the general view of the upanishads okay vedanta sutras are summarized general views of upanishads vedanta sutras this work is divided into four books or adhyayas and each adhyaya is divided into four padas or chapters the first four sutras of the work commonly known as चतुसूत्री अच्छा द फोर फर्स्ट फोर सूत्रास ऑफ द वर्क कॉमनली नोन एज चतुसूत्री सूत्री आर वन हाउ टू आस्क अबाउट ब्राह्मण टू फ्रॉम होम प्रोसीड बर्थ एंड डिके किसकी वजह से बर्थ और डिके होता है थ्री दिस इज बिकॉज फ्रॉम हिम द वेदाज हैव कम कम फोर्थ अच्छा जिससे भी हुआ है उससे ही वेदा आया है फोर दिस इज शोन बाय द हारमोनियस टेस्टिमनी ऑफ द ओपनिशद The whole of the first chapter of the second book is devoted to justifying the position of the Vedanta against the attacks of the rival schools. The second chapter of the second book is busy in dealing blows at rival systems. <laughs> Counter de raha hai sabko. All the other parts of the book are devoted to see this is a, this is called peer review. You will always notice that if you read any primary source of Indic texts, ye ye sab log dissertation paper presenting ke jaise hi likhte hain, research paper ke jaise hi likhte hain. Artha Shastra has is full of citations chanakya mentions other gurus one after other uh, five to six gurus he repeatedly cites he cites the sources then says that here is why how i agree with them here is how i disagree with them and what we are seeing here is exactly how today even today academics uh, work how academia functions they are they are peer reviewing each other's work and and uh, critiquing their works not criticizing critiquing 
all the other parts of the book are devoted to settling the disputed interpretations of a number of individual upanishad texts the really philosophical the really philosophical portion of the work is thus limited to the first four sutras and the first and second chapters of the second book the other portions are like commentaries to the upanishads which however contain many theological views of the system the first commentary of the brahma sutra was probably written by bodhyayana bodhyayana which however is not available now the earliest commentary that is now found is that of the great shankara his interpretations of the brahma sutras together with all the commentaries and other works that follow his views are popularly known as as vedanta philosophy so this philosophy ought more properly to be called visuddha dvaita vada acha the the scholar this scholar shrinivas dasgupta is saying usko vedanta philosophy ke bolne se acha hai the the correct term should be visuddha dvaita vada school of vedanta philosophy that is the vedanta philosophy of the school of absolute monism variant forms of dualistic philosophy as represented by by the vaishnavas shaivas ramayatas etc also claim to express the original purport of the brahma sutras we thus find that apostles of dualistic creeds such as ramanuja vallabha madhva srikanta uh, baladeva etc have written independent commentaries on the brahma sutra to show that the philosophy as elaborated uh, that the philosophy as elaborated by themselves is the view of the upanishads and as summarized in the brahma sutras these differed largely and often vehemently attacked shankara's interpretations of the same sutras these systems as expounded by them also pass by the name of vedanta as these are also claimed to be the real interpretations intended by the veda vedanta or upanishads and the vedanta sutras okay of these the system of ramanuja has great philosophical importance the nyaya sutras attributed to gautama called also akshapada and the vaisheshika sutras attributed to kanada called also uluka vaisheshika sutras mein to atoms ka bhi discussion hua hai as far as i have heard subhash kak ka translation hai is book mein uh, is book ka aur uska com- commentary bhi hai dr subhash kak ka so the nyaya sutras attributed to gautama called uh, akshapada and the vaisheshika sutras attributed to kanada called also uluka i see represent the same system for all practical purposes they are in later times considered to differ only in a few points of minor importance acha to gautama ka akshapada aur nyay sutra aur vaisheshika sutra mein zyada difference nahi hai chhota mota difference hai so far as the sutras are concerned the nyay sutras lay particular stress on the cultivation of logic as an art wow so far as the sutras are concerned the nyay sutras lay particular stress on the cultivation of logic as an art while the vaisheshika sutras deal mostly with metaphysics and physics yeah isliye usme atoms hai philosophy or physics ekdam mila mila diya hai this is why teaching natural science and social science in india is, is such a uh, such a such an un indian concept so nyay sutras is is cultivation of logic as an art this is a pretty great concept in itself in addition to these systems the tantras had also philosophies of their own which however may generally be looked upon largely as modifications of the samkhya and vedanta systems though their own contributions are also noteworthy let me have a sip of coffee uh, aditi i'll come back to manusmriti probably tomorrow night most probably tomorrow night Shravya, yeah, my my schedule has got a bit screwed up, so I'll follow the uh, Manusmriti original days as well. Man, originally, ma- Monday night was Manusmriti night. Wednesday is uh, Wednesday was supposed to be paper or history of Indian philosophy. So this week, me, thora mera kaam aur schedule kuch ulta pulta ho gaya tha. Okay, now some fundamental points of agreement between all these theories. Okay. and a uh, start of a new sub chapter 1 minute this is getting interesting okay so the karma th- the the karma theory k- 
karma. It is however remarkable that with the exception of the Charvaka materialists, all the other systems agree on some fundamental points of importance. Achha. The systems of philosophy in India were not stirred up merely by the speculative demands of the human mind, which has a natural inclination for indulging in abstract thought, but they were born because of a deep craving after the realization of the religious purpose of life. It is surprising to note that the postulates, the propositions, the aims and conditions for such a realization were found to be identical in all the conflicting systems. Achha, this is why kuch uniformity to hai. Aisa nahi ke Hinduism matlab kuch jo ji mein aaye karo sab, sab kuch Hinduism hai. Hindu philosophy naam ka kuch to uniformity hai. So it is surprising to note that the postulates, aims and conditions for such a realization were found to be identical in all the conflicting systems. Whatever may be their differences of opinion in other matters, so far as the general postulates for the realization of the transcendent state, the summum bonum of life, were concerned, all the systems were practically in thorough agreement. It may be worthwhile to note some of them at this stage. This is very important. We are getting into what are the core agreements in all the different schools of Hindu philosophy. So now we will get a basic shape of Hindu philosophy. Okay? These are non-negotiables. These are agree agreed upon by every every school of thought. Aisa nahi hai ke uspe abhi evolve ho ke kuch further kaam nahi ho sakta hai, but so far as we stand here, this is what are the agreements upon um, among all the schools of thought. It's not like everyone is agreeing with every disagreeing with everyone on everything. First, the theory of karma and rebirth. All the Indian systems agree in believing that whatever action is done by an individual leaves behind it some sort of potency which has the power to ordain for him joy or sorrow in the future according as it is good or bad. When the fruits of the actions, fruits meaning this is obviously translated from Sanskrit text, right? So here uh, the fruit basically actually literally means phal and that's why phal means uh, result and a fruit. So when the fruits of the actions are such that they cannot be enjoyed in the present life or a human life, the individual has to take another birth as a man or any other being in order to suffer them. The Vedic belief that the mantras uttered in the correct accent at the sacrifices with the proper observance of all ritualistic details exactly according to the directions without the slightest error even in the smallest trifle had something like a magical virtue automatically to produce the desired object immediately or after a lapse of time was probably the earliest form of the karma doctrine. Achha. Yeah, interesting interpretation hai ke wo yagya karne ka jo uh, rigidity tha, strictness tha ke exactly aise hi karna hai. Uh, this author is saying that that might have been the, the, the birth of that idea of karma. Kyunki ye idea to ekdam 8-9,000 saal shayad purana hai. It postulates, it, po it postulates this, this philosophy a semi-conscious belief that certain mystical actions can produce at a distant time baad mein, certain effects without the ordinary process of the instrumentality of visible agents of ordinary cause and effect. It's not like I hit a mic stand and hit the mic stand. Gir gaya. No. If I do something now, somehow or the other it's going to lead me to a result much later. When the sacrifice is performed, the action leaves such an unseen magical value called the Adrishta, the unseen, or the Apurva, new, that by it the desired object will be achieved in a mysterious manner, for the modus operandi of the Apurva is unknown. Modus operandi meaning mode of operation, because the mode of operation of the Apurva is unknown. There is also the notion prevalent in the Samhitas, there is the Vedas, as we have already noticed, that though that he who commits wicked deeds suffers in another world, wherever he who performs good deeds enjoys the highest material pleasures. These were probably associated with the conception of Rita. Rita ka word hum, Rita word ka humne ek, uh, roots or other interpretations discuss kiya tha the day we discuss casteism in Buddhism. Rita Rita ka matlab hai jo R I T E S hai rights. So any any kind of rules regulations that you follow in order to good uh, in order in order to get good results all of that comes from the root word rita 
So right thing to do, in fact, actually might have its root in Rita. Rita writes R I T E S R I G H T both. These were probably associated with the conception of Rita, the inviolable order of things, because it's right. It's it's the right thing to do. Thus, these are probably the elements which built up the karma theory, which we find pretty pretty well established, but not emphasized in the Upanishads. where it is said that according to good or bad actions men will have good or bad births to notice other relevant points in connection with the karma doctrine as established in the astika systems we find that it was believed that the unseen adrishta potency of the action generally required some time before it could be fit for giving the doer of the of the merited before giving the doer the merited punishment or enjoyment thoda thoda time pass hona hai uh they were observing this to notice other relevant points in connection with the karma doctrine as established in the astika systems we find that it was believed that the unseen potency that is the adrishta of the action generally required some time before it be, generally required some time before it could be fit for giving the doer the merited punishment or enjoyment these would often accumulate and prepare and this is an eternal principle this is an universal principle Archety- archetypal principle because there is always that's why even even uh, adam smith wrote the book called the invisible hand of market i i forgot wealth of nations mein ye discuss hua tha na the invisible hand of market so uh, as invisible and, and the market works in the same way in fact the market works exactly like your body or your life achievements exactly that's how the market works your karma will get you stuff and or will not get you stuff so these are that's why these are eternal concepts that are that are applicable everywhere in every every situation and eternal ka sanskrit hai sanatan these would often accumulate and prepare the items acha these would often accumulate and prepare the items of suffering and enjoyment for the doer in his next life only the fruits of those actions which are extremely wicked or particularly good कुड बी रीप्ड इन दिस लाइफ अच्छा अगर बहुत खराब कुछ कर दिया बहुत अच्छा कुछ कर दिया तो उसका फल अभी मिल जाएगा द नेचर ऑफ द नेक्स्ट बर्थ ऑफ अ मैन इज डिटरमाइंड बाई द नेचर ऑफ प्लेजरेबल और पेनफुल एक्सपीरियंसेज दैट हैव बीन मेड रेडी फॉर हिम बाई हिज मच्योरिंग एक्शन ऑफ हिज लाइफ बाई हिज मच्योरिंग एक्शन ऑफ दिस लाइफ इफ द एक्सपीरियंस इज डिटरमाइंड फॉर हिम बाई हिज एक्शन आर सच दैट दे आर पॉसिबल टू बी रियलाइज इन द लाइफ ऑफ अ गोट द मैन विल डाई एंड बी बॉर्न एज अ गोट as there is no ultimate beginning in time of this world process so there is no time at which one person uh, there is no time at which any person first began his actions or experiences we are just going on evolving and doing things and getting the results man has an has unless you give up desire in which case you are one with the brahman man has had an infinite number of past lives of the most varied nature and the instincts of each kind of and the instincts of each kind of life exists dormant in the life of every individual har har past life ka jo instinct hai wo kahin na kahin tum ke tumhare andar abhi bhi dormant reh gaya hai exists dormant in the life of every individual and thus whenever he has any particular birth as this or that animal or man the special instincts of that life technical technically called vasana come forth in bengali bashana means a desire hmm. in accordance with the, so the regional prakrits of of the original sanskrit words how they evolved actually tells you a lot about that particular society okay uh the, the the speakers of those languages how they use those sanskrit concepts and 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 take it upon themselves to use use them in a different way like uh, siddhanta in in sanskrit or in hindi siddhanta means just a theory in bengali siddhanta means a decision concrete ho gaya theory bhi chodo yahi hai यही होगा लाइक हिंसा हिंसा मीन्स वायलेंस इन इन एवरी आई थिंक इंडियन लैंग्वेज इन बेंगोली हिंसा मीन्स वायलेंस आई मीन इन इन बेंगोली हिंसा मीन्स जेलसी दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग जेलसी एंड एंड वायलेंस इज इंटरचेंजेबल इन अकॉर्डेंस विद दीज वासनाज द पर्सन पासिस थ्रू द पेनफुल और प्लेजरेबल एक्सपीरियंसेज एज डिटरमाइंड फॉर हिम बाई हिज एक्शन the length of life is also determined by the number and duration of experiences 
as preordained by the fructifying actions of of his past life uske upar depend karega ki kitna din zinda rahega when one certain when one certain actions become fit for giving certain experiences these cannot be avoided but those actions which have not matured those actions which have not matured are uprooted once for all if the person attains true knowledge as advocated by philosophy but even such an emancipated emancipated person or mukta person has to pass through the pleasurable or painful experiences ordained for him by the actions just ripened for giving his giving their fruits there are four kinds of actions white or virtuous shukla black or wicked krishna white black or partly virtuous and partly vicious shukla krishna the, the gray area as most of our actions are ah ye khud author ne hi yahan pe commentary de diya hai ke uh, white black or partly virtuous and partly vicious which is called shukla krishna as most of our actions are and neither black nor white iska naam hai asukla asukla krishna ye kaisa concept hoga think up, think hard about this what might be an action which is neither vicious nor uh, not not really great that is acha iska example hai asukla krishna that is those acts of self renunciation or meditation which are not associated with any desires for the fruit but we had discussed it in in a previous chapter that ye to possible hi nahi hai uh bina desire ka koi kaam kaise kar sakta hai koi karta hi nahi hai there there is a con- uh, there is a debate inside hindu philosophy regarding this it is only when a person can so restrain himself restrain himself as to perform only the last kind of action that is asukla krishna ke koi koi desire ke bina kar raha hu it's so it's neither vicious nor great सिर्फ तब जाके इट इज ओनली वेन अ पर्सन कैन सो रिस्ट्रेन हिमसेल्फ एज टू परफॉर्म ओनली द लास्ट काइंड ऑफ एक्शन दैट ही सीजेज सीजेज स्टॉप्स टू एक्यूमुलेट एनी न्यू कर्मा फॉर गिविंग फ्रेश फ्रूट्स या दिस वी हैड लर्न इन अ प्रीवियस चैप्टर एज वेल दैट ओनली ओनली वे यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू सफर अ रीबर्थ दे आर देर सेंग एनी एनी बर्थ इज सफरिंग अगर अच्छा है तब भी सफरिंग है क्योंकि जन्माना तो परा है जन्म लेना तो परा your what would be the best for you if was if you were not even born and you were one with the brahma brahman brahmanaspati etc uh, brahman brahmanaspati prajapati vishvakarman etc the the supreme consciousness so uh, agar agar uh, as to perform only the last kind of action if you end up doing asukla krishna then you cease to accumulate any new karma for giving fresh fruits and therefore you are, you are not even born he has thus only to enjoy the fruits of his previous karmas which have ripened for giving fruits if in the meantime he attains true knowledge all his past accumulated actions become destroyed and as his acts are only of the asukla krishna type no fresh karma for ripening is accumulated and thus he becomes divested of all karma after enjoying the fruits of the ripened karmas alone ah <sighs> rita rita RTA yes okay let me have a sip of coffee the jains think okay let me make an announcement i forgot to announce uh, i have started the join button so if anyone wants to do book club discussions to actually be online and uh, have special uh, videos to discuss the books which will get Uh, copyright violations books which are like recent so if you all buy the book but feel too distracted to read them on your own alone because of you don't have time etc there is a subscription model i've given it's 159 rupees uh, then we will end up discussing even the modern current books by sanjeev sanyal jay sai deepak people like those etc and ved veer arya especially i really want to get into his books so uske liye you can you, you can uh, join and we'll have sessions for those books as well because those i can't do publicly because their publishers are going to be very pissed off with me so uh, the jains the jains think that through the actions of body speech and mind a kind of subtler matter technically called karma is produced acha karma is a subtler matter the passions of a man like uh, act like a vicious substance that attracts this karma matter which thus pours into the soul and sticks to it 
the karma matter thus accumulated around the soul during the infinite number of past lives is technically called kar karma sharira or basically karma sharira i don't know why why he has given kar dash kar dash masarira which encircles the soul as it passes on from birth to birth this karma matter this karma matter sticking to the soul gradually ripens and exhausts itself in ordaining the sufferance of pains or the enjoyment of pleasures for the individual while some karma matter is being expended in this way other karma matters are accumulating by his activities and thus keep him in a continuous process of suffering and enjoyment while some karma matter is being ex expended in this way other karma matters are accumulated by uh, are accumulating by his activities and thus keep him in a continuous process of suffer suffering and enjoyment acha the karma matter thus accumulated in the soul produces a kind of coloration called lesha such as white black etc which marks the character of the soul the idea of the shukla and krishna krishna karmas of the yoga system was probably suggested by the jain view but when a man is free from passions and acts in a strict compliance with the rules of conduct his actions produce karma which lasts but for a moment and is then annihilated ye kab hoga jab free from passion ho jayega jab desire khatam every okay then what happens uh, his actions produce karma which only lasts for a bit and then then is annihilated karma karma wo karma matter gayab every karma that the sage has previously earned has its predestined limits within which it it must take um, within which it must take effect and be purged away but when by contemplation and the strict adherence to the five great vows no new karma is generated and when all the karmas are exhausted the worldly existence of the person rapidly draws towards its end thus in the last stage of contemplation all karma being annihilated and all activities having ceased the soul leaves the body and goes up to the top of the universe where the liberated souls stay forever buddhism also contributes some new traits to the karma theory which however being intimately connected with their metaphysics will be treated later on now the doctrine of mukti not only do the okay let me check some uh are you there on discord too? i am there on discord i am not much online wahan pe zyada hota nahi hai kuch i i try to uh, keep only my comment sections uh, active wahan pe main comment sections mein bhi bahut active rehta hu uh, discussions karta hu uh, kisi ko agar koi uh, hater aa jaye to unko unko sarcastically cheeze bhi bolta hu so the doctrine of mukti are a beautiful likh ke delete kyun kar diya message not only do the indian systems agree as to the cause of the inequalities in the share of sufferings and enjoyments in the case of different persons and the manner in which the cycle of births and rebirths has been kept going from a beginningless time on the basis of the mysterious connection of one's actions with the happenings of the world but they also agree acha bahut sara list tha ek minute so this the subheading is called uh, the doctrine of mukti because we are discussing the agreements so first point of agreement was the karma theory second point of agreement among all the schools of indian philosophy are is the doctrine of mukti not only do the indian systems agree as to the cause of the inequalities acha kiske wajah se ye share of suffering kam zyada kam ho raha hai alag alag logon mein and the manner in which the cycle of births and rebirths has been kept going from beginningless time on the basis of the mysterious connection of one's uh, actions with the happenings of the world ye sab mein uh, agreement to hai hi but they also agree in believing that this beginningless chain of karma and its phal of births and rebirths this running on from beginningless time has somewhere its end acha kahin na kahin end hona hai ye inka manna hai this end was not to be attained at some distant time or in some distant kingdom but was to be sought within us अच्छा ये सोसाइटी का अंत नहीं है दुनिया का अंत नहीं है ये लोगों का एक एक लोगों का एक एक सोल का अंत है जबकि कभी ना कभी वो आ, अगर इमेनिसिपेट हो गया डिज़ायर 
क्विट कर लिया तब तो उसका एंड होना ही है कर्मा लीड जस्ट टू दिस एंडलेस साइकिल एंड इफ वी कुड डाइवेस्ट आर सेल्व ऑफ ऑल सच इमोशंस आइडियाज और डिजायर एज लीडर्स टू एक्शन वी शुड फाइंड विद इन अस द एक्शन लेस सेल्फ विच नाइदर सफर्स नॉर एंजॉयज नाइदर वर्क नॉर अंडर गोज रीबर्थ नाइदर सफर्स नॉर एंजॉयज नाइदर वर्क नॉर अंडर गोज रीबर्थ When the Indians, wearied, tired by the endless bustle and turmoil of worldly events, sought for and believed that somewhere a peaceful goal could be found, they generally hit upon the self of man. The belief that the soul could be realized in some stage, as being permanently divested of all action, uh, divested of all actions, feelings, or ideas, led logically to the conclusion that the connection of the soul. with these worldly elements was extraneous artificial or even illusory maya in its true nature the soul is untouched by the impurities of our ordinary life and it is through ignorance and passion as inherited from the cycle of karma from beginningless time that we connect with connect it with these the realization of this transcendent state is the goal and final achievement of this endless cycle of births and rebirths through karma the buddhists did not admit the existence of soul but recognized that the final realization of the process of karma is to be found in the ultimate dissolution called nirvana the nature of which we shall discuss later on okay now the the third point of agreement among all the indian school uh, indian schools of philosophy एक मिनट चैप्टर हम हाँ हाँ ये चैप्टर आज खत्म हो जाएगा और और दो पेज बाकी है सिर्फ नाइस द डॉक्टर ऑफ सोल ऑल द इंडियन सिस्टम एक्सेप्ट बुद्धिज्म एडमिट द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ अ परमानेंट एंटिटी वेरियस वेरियसली कॉल्ड आत्मन पुरुषा और जीव एज टू द एग्जैक्ट नेचर ऑफ दिस सोल दे आर आर इंडी डाइवर्जेंस ऑफ व्यू दस वाइल द न्याय कॉल्स इट एब्सोल्यूटली क्वालिटी or characterless in the indeterminate unconscious entity soul sam here describes it as being of the nature of pure consciousness the vedanta says that it is that fundamental point of unity in pure consciousness the chit pure bliss ananda and pure being sat satchitananda okay i i know a bit of this concept because i have managed to read about 150 pages of sri aurobindo's book the life divine it's insanely tough to read but i did manage to go through it because thankfully he repeats his concepts a little it's not like sitaram goes book ek page mein kuch pad liya samjha nahi to miss kar gaya po wo pura utna precise nahi likhte the sri aurobindo thus while the nyaya calls it qualityless characterless in indeterminate unconscious entity Samkhya describes it as being of the nature of pure consciousness. अच्छा तो ये ये तीनों लोगों का तीनों तरफ से ओपिनियन है ऑन ऑन वॉट इज सोल सामख्या इज सेंग इट इज इट इज अ बींग ऑफ नेचर ऑफ प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस एंड वेदांता इज सेंग दैट इट इज दैट फंडामेंटल पॉइंट ऑफ यूनिटी इम्प्लाइड इन प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस चित आनंद एंड सत सत इज प्योर बींग आनंद इज ब्लिस it is pure consciousness but all agree in holding that it is pure and unsullied kuch kuch ganda bandan hai nahi isme in its nature and that all impurities of action or passion do not form a real part of it so the soul is pure tum jo kaam galat kar rahe ho jo impurities kar rahe ho usse wo affect bhi nahi ho raha hai aur uske wajah se tumhara aisa ho raha hai aisa bhi nahi hai wo soul apne jagah mein pure hai summum bonum of life the it's a latin phrase the sum of everything s u m m u m b o n u m the summum bonum of life is attained when all impurities are removed and the pure nature of the self is thoroughly and permanently apprehended jab tum fully realize kar paoge ki tumhara ye pure soul kaisa hai and what what might be your actions if you really want to be that pure actions to hona bhi nahi chahiye Uh, the summum bonum of life is attained when all impurities are removed and the pure nature of self of that self is thoroughly and permanently apprehended and all other extraneous connections all the external connections with it are absolutely dissociated that is when the summum bonum of life is attained oh. 
Vijay Singh is saying there should be a system that how great Hindu become like Muslim minded. ये तो देखो survival uh, survival tactics के वजह से ही Abrahamic faith what what is what is different from us from Abrahamic faith because they were born those thoughts those ideas were born in a desert survival जहाँ पे बहुत मुश्किल था खाने को कुछ नहीं है मार पीट करने के वाला कोई बचा नहीं है स्टडो डेजर्ट तो उनका सर्वाइवल एट एनी कॉस्ट इज देर फिलोसफी हमारा तो वैसा नहीं है हमारा जियोग्राफी वैसा नहीं है हमारा सेक्रेट जो जियोग्राफी है वहाँ पे ऐसा नहीं है कि हर वक्त मारो काटो नहीं तो तुम कल मर जाओगे इसलिए आर फिलोसफी इज डिफरेंट तो हमारा वो हाल कब हुआ इस्लामिक इन्वेजन्स की वजह से यूरोपियन कॉलोनाइजेशन की वजह से वी हैड टू बिकम सर्वाइवल ओरिएंटेड दैट इज़ वाई वी ऑल्सो बिकेम लिटल एब्रहमाइज अभी इसीलिए तो मैं बोल रहा हूँ जब बिहार में इकोनॉमिक अपलिफ्टमेंट होगा तब वो ये डॉग इट डॉग वर्ल्ड नहीं रहेगा तब थोड़ा फिलोसॉफिकल इंट्रोस्पेक्शन होगा तब फिर वो लेस एब्रहमाइज बन जाएंगे वट वी नीड एज अ ग्रेट पूर्व पक्ष डिपार्टमेंट हो विद ग्रेट प्रसिशन स्टडी पास थाउजेंड ये 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 तो इंडिपेंडेंटली अभी हो रहा है वेद वीरारिया मीनाक्षी जैन एक्सेट्रा दे आर डूइंग बट फिलोसॉफी के जगत में थोड़ा कम हो रहा है सो फार आई थिंक Uh, or unless you you talk to any gurus, they might be genius uh, geniuses on it on it, but they are not really writing popular philosophy books which can be grasped by the masses. Uh, masses तो वैसे वे वैसे भी grasp नहीं कर पाएंगे. But I'm saying the philosophy equivalent of J. S. I. Deepak Meenakshi Jain, वो हमारे पास नहीं है. J. S. I. Deepak is giving us the sociological perspective to this. Meenakshi Jain, Sanjeev Sanyal, they are giving the history perspective to this. They are bringing out all those valuable information and bring. Doing something to make it a little more accessible. Philosophy me vaisa kam nahi ho raha. I would say th- this book is kind of that that uh, it has tried to make Indian philosophy more accessible. But he is his he has been dead many years back. So abhi ek aur naya vaisa koi chahiye. Jo ki itna expert hoga, jo ki sah saral bhasha me Indian philosophy samjhata rahe. Or not just samjhata rahe, ek book bhi likhe. क्योंकि सरल भाषा में समझा एक दो बार कोई सत्संग में जाके तो नहीं होगा एक घंटे का पॉडकास्ट सुन के तो नहीं होगा बुक स्कॉलरशिप तो चाहिए जो कि वो हम एकेडमिक्स में स्कूल कॉलेजेस में मास्टर्स लेवल में पीएचडी में सीख पढ़ा भी सके इंस्टेड ऑफ ऑल ओनली वेस्टर्न फिलोसफर्स और हम कोई ऐसे बैठ के अपने इंटरेस्ट के लिए भी पढ़ सके ओके सब चैप्टर इज बिगिनिंग नाउ द पेसिमिस्टिक एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड्स द वर्ल्ड एंड द ऑप्टिमिस्टिक फेथ इन द एंड Vinay Singh is saying Sri Aurobind do think that religion is bedrock of country. Yes. Unka Uttar Pradesh speech ka last line uh with with sanat for for us sanatan dharm is nationalism and with sanatan dharm this nation rises and if sanatan dharm were 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 able were, were capable of perishing then with that this nation would perish. That's I have I have now mugged up the lines of of the last lines of Uttar Pradesh speech I've read it so many times. the pessimistic attitude towards the world and the optimistic faith in the end i am not religious i was not brought up in a religious family but i uh, agree 100% that religion is the bedrock of uh, of society at least aur hamare liye to ye exactly religion bhi nahi hai hamare liye dharma hinduism is the bedrock of this country there is no two questions about it anymore in my mind at least so the pessimistic attitude towards the world and the optimistic faith in the end <laughs> sarcastic thoda sub headline hai ye Though the belief that the world is full of sorrow has not been equally uh, prominently emphasized in all systems, yet it may be considered as being shared by all of them. अच्छा अच्छा ये भी एक point of agreement है in in all all schools of Indian philosophy that ये ये जो material world है उसके तरफ थोड़ा बहुत एक pessimistic view है और जो अंत है उसके तरफ थोड़ा एक optimistic भरोसा है उसके तरफ it finds its strongest utterance in samkhya yoga and buddhism just when i was thinking that i am a samkhya samkhya adherent this interminable chain of pleasure and uh, painful experiences was looked upon as nearing no peaceful end but embroiling and entangling us in the meshes of karma rebirth and sorrow what appears as pleasures are but a mere appearance for the attempt to keep them steady okay what appears as pleasures are but a mere appearance for the attempt to keep them steady is painful 
There is pain when we lose the pleasures or when we are anxious to have them. Ah ha ha, ये तो अच्छा concept है. जो वो वो जो जिस चीज़ से हमको मज़ा मिलेगा मिल रहा है हम समझ रहे हैं, वो भी हमको pain ही दे रहा है क्योंकि वो जब तक नहीं मिल रहा है उसमें भी pain है, जब वो खत्म हो गया तब भी pain है. <laughs> when, <coughs> when the pleasures are so much associated with pains, they are but pains themselves. See, this is why this is why economics, free market economics should work absolutely beautifully in India if people were very dharmic, okay? Because we are not 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 going to be we should not be greedy fucks if if we are adherents of Indian philosophy, okay? Because in all the basic me dimag me ye chal raha hai ke desire desire chodo yar. Wo dil mangye more attitude to is a very un-Hindu attitude. So. Uh, Capitalism is not does not have to be founded on just consumerism. Okay, this is why Arthashastra Chanakya is again my go-to economics guy. Not and I, this is where I differ from uh, Subramaniam Swami. Actually, until until a few months back, I used to think that yes, Dr. Subramaniam Swami is the best thing that has happened to this country. But his views are also very consumerism oriented because even he was advocating for distributing money uh, in times of. Coronavirus. He's saying that that would have led to more more purchase power. Sirf purchase, purchase, purchase. Sirf consume. करके क्या होगा? USA हमारे सामने है. हम example देख रहे हैं के. Purchase करते करते दिमाग घंटा में चला गया इनका. उससे अच्छा चानक्य नीति है. थोड़ा थोड़ा सब कुछ थोड़ा control में रखो. Free market भी रखो. Socialist freebies का जरूरत नहीं है. मगर on on an individual level, be less materialistic. Be as as less low low amount of materialistic as possible. When the pleasures are so much associated with pains, they are but pains themselves. <laughs> we are but duped when we seek pleasures, because they are sure to lead us to pain. <laughs> All our experiences are essentially sorrowful and ultimately sorrow begetting. Sorrowful to hai hi sorrow lata bhi hai. Sorrow is the ultimate truth of this process of the world. That which to an ordinary person seems pleasurable. Appears to a wise person or to a yogin who has a clearer vision as painful. The greater the knowledge, the higher is the sensitiveness to sorrow. Ah ha ha, and dissatisfaction with world experiences. Ah, kya line hai ye? Ye ye jo scholar hai, ye khud bhi bahut bade philosopher hai. Nahi to philosophy me five volume ka book thori likh sakte hain. What a great line here, ha? Huh? This is his observation. The greater the knowledge, the higher is the sensitiveness to sorrow. and dissatisfaction with world experiences the yogin is like the pupil of the eye to which even the smallest grain of disturbance is unbearable pupil of the eye he is like that delicate unko thoda bhi disturbance nahi pasand aa raha hai this sorrow of worldly experiences cannot be removed by bringing in remedies for each sorrow as it comes for the moment it is remedied uh, for the moment it is remedied uh ja, um, so ja, ja, at the very moment when it is remedied another sorrow comes in it cannot also be avoided by a mere inaction or suicide because we are continually being forced to action by our nature and suicide will but lead to another life of sorrow and rebirth yes this is not nihilism yeah so how is this different from nihilism ke acha to kuch kaam karna nahi hai to rebirth avoid karna hai to खुद कुछ ही कर लो वो भी नहीं है द ओनली वे टू गेट रिड ऑफ इट इज बाय द कलमिनेशन ऑफ मॉरल ग्रेटनेस एंड ट्रू नॉलेज व्हिच अप्रूव्ड सॉरो वंस एंड फॉर ऑल अच्छा और यहां पे सॉरो क्या है डिजायर एंड हैप्पीनेस इज सॉरो इट इज आर इग्नोरेंस दैट द सेल्फ इज इंटीमेटली कनेक्टेड विद द एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ लाइफ और इट्स प्लेजर या द सेल्फ इज नॉट सपोज्ड टू बी कनेक्टेड विद लाइफ एंड इट्स प्लेजर्स ये हमारे ये हमारा दोष है इट्स आवर फॉल्ट कि हमने सेल्फ को कनेक्ट कर दिया है लाइफ एंड इट्स प्लेजर्स के साथ सो इट इज आर इग्नोरेंस दैट द सेल्फ इज इंटीमेटली कनेक्टेड विद द एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ लाइफ और इट्स प्लेजर्स दैट लीड्स अस टू एक्शन एंड दैट लीड्स अस टू एक्शन एंड अराउज अस पैशन इन अस फॉर द एंजॉयमेंट ऑफ प्लेजर्स एंड अदर इमोशंस एंड एक्टिविटीज थ्रू द हाइएस्ट मॉरल एलिवेशन अ मैन मे अटेन एब्सोल्यूट डिस्पैशन टूवर्ड्स वर्ल्ड एक्सपीरियंसेज एंड रिटायर इन बॉडी माइंड एंड स्पीच From all worldly concerns, ये लाइन थोड़ा एक बार पढ़ते हैं। 
through the highest moral elevation a man may attain absolute dispassion towards world experiences highest moral elevation kahan se hoga and retire in body mind and speech from all worldly concerns when the mind is so purified the self shines in its true light and its true nature is rightly conceived kab when the mind is so purified <clears throat> when this is once done the self can never again be associated with passion or ignorance it becomes at this stage ultimately dissociated from chitta which contains with it within it the root of all emotions ideas and actions acha it becomes at this stage ultimately dissociated from chitta or chitta which is which contains within it the root of all emotions ideas and actions ye sab hai chitta because it comes from the concept chit chit ka translation kya tha yahan pe pure consciousness okay but this is chitta so it, it the root is not chit the emancipated thus emancipated the self forever conquers all sorrow yeah ha huh. happiness expectations vagara kuch hai hi nahi to sorrow to conquer ho hi gaya okay bhojpuri ascetics is saying can it mean sorrow takes its character from desire yeah that is exactly what they are saying desire desire tum kar rahe ho kuch happiness ke liye magar uske jab wait mein bhi sorrow hai waiting mein waiting period mein bhi sorrow hai jab chala jayega tab mein bhi sorrow hai so sorrow takes its character from desire it is important however to note in this connection that emancipation or mukti is not based on a general aversion to intercourse with the world or on such feelings as a disappointed person may have but on the appreciation of the state of mukti as the supremely blessed one acha ye bahut badhiya subtle nuanced and and important concept hai dekho ab tak padh ke jaisa lag raha tha usme ek twist aa gaya hai so it is important to note that in this connection emancipation or mukti is not based on a general aversion towards intercourse with the world your interaction with the world uske 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 taraf aversion karne ka zarurat nahi hai ya fir uh, aversion towards such feelings as a disappointed persons may have disappointed person may have waisa waisa depressed zindagi bhi bitane ka baat nahi ho raha hai what they are talking about is the appreciation of the state of mukti as the supremely blessed one to to ye tumhara at least goal hona chahiye आइडियल होना चाहिए आइडियल फॉलो होगा कि नहीं होगा वो तो बाद में है आइडियल तो होना चाहिए एंड द आइडियल दे आर सेइंग इज टू अवॉइड डिजायर इट्स मिलंग को लिया यस विनय सिंह सिंह इन आर एरिया भागवत पुराण सत्संग हैपन द ओनली पीपल हु हैड गॉन टू सत्संग वर वुमेन बट ऑन द डे ऑफ प्रसाद एंटायर बस्ती हैड गॉन इट विल सेव देयर राशन ऑफ द इश वैसे हां देखो ना राशन के लिए क्यों जा रहे हैं इकोनॉमी गड्ढे में है ना इकोनॉमी ठीक करने तो सब ठीक हो जाएगा बिहार का मेरा 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 बहुत आशाएं हैं बिहार से द डिटेल्स ऑफ द पेसिमिस्टिक क्रीड ऑफ ईच सिस्टम हैव डेवलप्ड फ्रॉम द लॉजिकल नेसेसिटी पिक्यूलियर टू ईच सिस्टम देयर वाज नेवर द स्लाइटेस्ट टेंडेंसी टू शर्क द ड्यूटीज ऑफ दिस लाइफ हाँ ये एग्जैक्ट एग्जैक्टली गृहस्थ धर्म हटा देने का कभी भी रिकमेंडेशन नहीं हुआ है कोई इंडियन फिलोसफी में बट टू राइज अबाव दैम through right performance and right understanding aha ghar bar chhod diya usse bada tumne jhanda gaad liya aisa nahi hai it is only when a man rises to the highest pinnacle of moral glory that he is fit for aspiring to that realization of selfhood it is only when a man rises to the highest pinnacle of moral glory that he is fit for aspiring to the realization of selfhood acha 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 chalo isme to thoda encouragement hai ke हाइस्ट पिनाकुल ऑफ मॉडल ग्लॉडी में पहुंचोगे तो जब पहुंचोगे तब यू विल बी फिट फॉर अस्पायरिंग टू द रियलाइजेशन ऑफ सेल्फ सेल्फहुड रियलाइजेशन ऑफ सेल्फहुड दैट व्हेन विल यू विल रियलाइज दैट प्योर सेल्फ इनसाइड यू व्हिच नॉट जस्ट इनसाइड यू इन एवरी फाइबर ऑफ योर बीइंग व्हिच इज व्हिच इज डिवॉइड ऑफ ऑल द इम्प्योरिटीज यू आर डूइंग इन योर लाइफ uh in comparison with which all worldly things or even the joys of heaven would not only shrink into insignificance but appear in their true character as sorrowful and loathsome wa 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 jo aisa aisa tab aisa aisa paristhiti aayega ke joys of heaven will also 
यू विल सी इट्स ट्रू नेचर जॉयज ऑफ हेवन का ट्रू कैरेक्टर क्या है सोरोफुल एंड लोथसम इट इज वेन हिज माइंड ओके रिमेंबर आई एम इट्स अ ग्रेट थिंग दैट आई एम रीडिंग द ब्रह्मपुराण इन पैरल टू दिस बुक कॉल हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडियन फिलोसफी बिकॉज आई एम रियलाइजिंग दट द ब्रह्मपुराण वॉज रिटन आई थिंक ड्यूरिंग द टाइम्स और जस्ट लेटर आफ्टर द उपनिषद बिकॉज आई एम कंटिन्यूसली सींग सिमिलर रेफरेंसेज एंड सिमिलर कॉन्सेप्ट ओके सो इन ब्रह्मपुराण वी रेड दैट देर वॉज अ लाइन इन ब्रह्मपुराण दैट जो जो पर्सन विकेट है जिसके दिल में खोट है जो कि हरामी है अंदर से वो तीर्थ में जाके भी कुछ कुछ नहीं होगा उसका और ये भी बोला जा रहा है ब्रह्मपुराण के ब्रह्मपुराण में के लोगों के अंदर में ही तीर्थ है ये सब ये सब तो कॉन्सेप्चुअल थिंग्स है ये तो मटेरियल थिंग्स नहीं है ऐसा नहीं है कि एक मंदिर ही जाओ तब तुम्हारा सब भला हो जाएगा मगर ब्रह्मपुराण में ये भी बोल रहा है कि जो लोग कृष्णा का नाम ले लेते हैं रोज चांट करते हैं पूरा दिन या ठीक ठीक समय पे उनके लिए बोला जा रहा है कि उनके लिए हेवन भी छोटा मोटा चीज़ है दे आर सेइंग इवन हेवन इज अनइम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर दोज पीपल क्योंकि उनके लिए उससे भी बढ़कर कुछ कुछ उनके लिए प्रतीक्षा कर रहा है तो दैट दैट कॉन्सेप्ट इज बिंग डिस्कस्ड हियर इट इज ओनली वेन अ मैन राइजेस टू द हाइस्ट पिनाकल ऑफ मॉरल ग्लोरी that he is fit for aspiring to that realization of selfhood in comparison with which all worldly things or even the joys of heaven would not shrink into would not only shrink into in- insignificance sirf insignificant hi nahi ho jayega joys of heaven and worldly things balki they appear in their true character which is sorrowful and loathsome or and and, and then uh, iskon wale bolenge ki ye tab hoga jab tum krishna ka naam jap karoge it is when his mind has thus turned from all ordinary joys ordinary joys when his mind has turned away from all ordinary joys that he can strive towards his ideal of salvation in fact it seems to me that a sincere religious craving after some ideal blessedness and quiet of self realization is indeed the fundamental fact from which not only her philosophy but many of the complex phenomena of the civilization of india can be logically deduced this is the author's observation okay let's let's read this out once more because it's kind of a conclusion in fact it seems to me that a sincere religious craving after some ideal blessedness and quiet of rea- self realization aha uh-huh, quiet of self realization shanti mein baith ke sochna is indeed the fundamental fact from which not only her philosophy but many of the complex phenomena of the civilization of india can be logically deduced acha acha ye bol rahe hai ki not just philosophy aur bhi jo jo hua hai cheeze even the actions the the politics the economics ye sab kuch hai rooted in what in the in the religious craving after some ideal blessedness and quite of self realization what we were just discussing that dharma is the is the bedrock of this country this is why aurobindo said it okay this is why sri aurobindo said it this is what the author is observing as a scholar of indian philosophy okay they are coming to the same conclusion okay you you are not you don't have to be a a, a random uh, angry vicious right winger to say these things everyone is coming to the same conclusion why it seems to me that a sincere religious craving after some ideal blessedness and quiet of self self realization usse hi not just uh uh indian civilization ka philosophy utha hai but also many of the complex phenomena of civilization jisme economics aata hai law aata hai sab kuch aata hai system of governance arthashastra sab kuch isme hi hai this is what this author rasulendra das gupta is observe, observing the sorrow around us has no fear for us if we remember that we are naturally sorrowless and blessed in ourselves the sorrow around us has no fear for us if we remember that we naturally we are naturally sorrowless and blessed in ourselves the pessimistic view loses all terror as it closes in as it closes in absolute optimistic confidence in oneself and the ultimate destiny and goal of emancipation yeah there this is a very nuanced very subtle di- di- difference from nihilism okay all this is all this uh, renouncing desire avoid karna wagaira ye sab pessimism ke liye nahi hai this is in fact for optimistic goals that if i do this there's a great reward waiting for me great peace waiting for me in my mind and future 
okay now just one last paragraph and then this chapter ends let me check out two or three comments here uh binay singh is saying how much we have changed from being seeker to believer exactly from mukti person to socialist and communist party yes well said actually after upanishad story become the way to taught for four purusharth and dharma and civilization of india yeah krishna become popular because of story and bhagavad gita yes and and iskon was had to operate inside uh, a very communistic society as well so un log ka thinking waise bhi brahmais tha iskon ka propagate hone mein this, this is why even ramkrishna can you believe such religious organizations existing in a such hardcore communist uh, state how how were they doing that because they had to modify a lot of their their basic understanding they they they, they gelled with the society because of having abrahamic lineage and and leanings bhojpuri aesthetics is saying we need not romanticize sorrow yes right that is the that is the conclusion here as well ah uh, last uh, last uh, sub chapter chhota ek paragraph ka are mera towel gir ja raha hai <clears throat> so it's called unity in indian sadhana bracket mein philosophical religious and ethical endeavors as might be expected the indian systems are all agreed upon the general uh, the the indian systems are all all agreed upon the general principles of ethical conduct which might be which must be followed for the attainment of salvation that all passions are to be controlled no injury to life in any form should be done and that all desire for pleasures should be checked are principles which are almost universally acknowledged I need to make one important point here क्योंकि लोग इतना ही सिर्फ इतना पढ़ लेते हैं और फिर बोलते हैं कि हिंदुज़म में तो वायलेंस का कोई जगह नहीं है ये स्वधर्म का बात हो रहा है ठीक है ये राजधर्म का बात नहीं हो रहा है दैट दैट डिस्टिंगशन नीज टू बी मेड वेन अ मैन अटेंड्स अ वेरी हाई डिग्री ऑफ मॉरल ग्रेटनेस ही हैज टू स्ट्रेंगदन एंड प्रिपेयर हिज माइंड फॉर फर्दर प्यूरिफाइंग एंड स्टेडिफाइंग एंड एंड स्टेडिंग इट फॉर द अटेनमेंट ऑफ हिज आइडियल and most of the indian systems are unanim- unanimous with regard to the means to be employed for this purpose isme sab ka agreement hai indian philosophy ke har school mein and when they say indian philosophy they mean buddhism jainism hinduism everything there are indeed divergences in certain details or technical names but the means to be adopted for purification are almost everywhere essentially the same as those advocated by the yoga system acha this might be a controversial thing uh, controversial thing to say today right Imagine a new Buddhist reading this. He will say that this guy is Surendranath Dasgupta is some caste is caste caste Hindu. वो लोग तो नहीं मानेंगे. Surendranath Dasgupta is saying that there are divergences in certain details or technical names, but the means to be adopted for purification are almost everywhere essentially the same as those as those advocated by the yoga system. Okay, then bhakti movement comes in. It is it is only in later times that devotion or bhakti. is seen to occupy a more prominent place especially in vaishnava schools of thought binay singh this this might be an answer to your question right vaishnava school of thought uh, said uh, talked more about bhakti and therefore bhakti is more of being a believer than a seeker isn't it and and bengal bihar regions have a lot of vaishnavas thus it was that thought uh, that thus it was that though there were thus it was that though there were many differences among the various systems yet their goal of life their attitude towards the world and the means for the attainment of the goal or sadhana being fundamentally the same there was a unique unity in the practical sadhana of almost all the indian systems unique unity ye unique unity kya hai ye hai sanatan dharm which for us is indian nationalism so Let's read the sentence again. It is uh, thus. It was that though there were many differences among the various systems, yet their goal of life, their attitude towards the world, and the means for the attainment of the goal or sadhana uh, for that ach- achievement of the goal being fundamentally the same, there was a unique I- unique unity in the practical sadhana of all almost all the Indian systems. The religious craving has been universal in India. Ah ha ha. this is why we have a sacred geography and again this is why sri aurobindo ghosh is so right the religious craving has been universal in india and this uniformity of sadhana 
has therefore secured for India a unity in all her aspirations and strivings. Ab jo koi bhi bole ke there is no such thing called Hinduism. Hinduism nahi hai kuch. It's a way of life. It's random people gathering together. There was no Hinduism before 1947. There was no Indian India before 1947. Yeh 1922 me yeh admi yeh book likke bol raha hai ke yeh hai unique identity of India. The religious craving has been universal in India, and this uniformity of sadhana has therefore secured for India a unity in all her aspirations and strivings. This is Suranana Dasgupta saying in 1922. Before people even started saying that 1947 ke pehle Hinduism nahi tha. This guy is saying it in 1922 ke yehi hai Hinduism, yehi hai India. The the concept concept to aagya hai. Naam humne baad me de diya hai. To kya hua? Concept wahan pe jaram ho gaya hai uska. Ah, this was a fun experience today. Okay, uh, uh, Vinay Singh is saying, for the sake of converting Abrahamic Iskand is Abrahamic Abrahamizing Abrahamizing Bhagavad Gita. Yes, yes. I don't trust Iskand Iskand translation. Not do I. I haven't even read that, and so it might be conceptually, uh, technically unfair of me to say that I don't trust the uh, translation. It's not like I have read five or six, and then I'm making this claim. I'm making this claim because I read Srila Prabhupada's other book called Beyond Delusion and Doubt. वो book क्या है? Every chapter is about Srila Prabhupada discussing one Western philosopher. Okay, Marx se leke Plato, Vedas sab ka. Wahan pe he says things which are absolutely communism based and and uh, Abrahamic. Usse mujhe bahut ek matlab uh, irritation jaisa hua and then I realized ki acha inka Bhagavad Gita kaisa hoga. Uh, Is kaun ka Bhagavad Gita par ke to log itna itna peace 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 non violence uh, bolte phirte so I trust that less now. So what he said in that was he said that. Industry, factory, vagara, uh, industrialization. These are inherently exploitative. This is a very communist thing to say. Okay, मतलब factory है वहाँ पे कोई बंदा काम कर रहा है मतलब exploitation. This is a commun communist premise. Other than that, then later I realized that uh, he has uh, he was saying everything in a very Abrahamic and communist way. I'll, I have done some uh, chapters of that. You can see in my playlist as well. The playlist is called. Uh, the name of the book only beyond delusion and doubt if you see the chapter on plato you will see that other than that later i heard that he has said that uh, jesus christ was a reincarnation of sri krishna so i guess that helps him convert people white people more uh, so what i have realized is that epistemically epistemologically he has not uh, made white people understand hinduism he has just replaced the names of jesus christ and conceptually same rakhe bol diya krishna krishna ka bhag bhag ban jao uh Okay, Bhojpuri Ascetics is saying to add <laughs> Brits first won the Battle of Baksar and got the rights of Bihar, Bengal, and Odisha. Yeah, uh, then began structural colonization of that region. A more important point is thanks for reminding this. Last day, Sanjay Dixit or 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 Ved uh, Vedvi Radia who was saying this that uh, what you have to oh no no I think Sanjay Dixit was saying this in an Ask Me Anything uh, podcast. He was saying that uh, see the notice the difference between. Uh, Rajasthan etc and uh, uh, Bengal Bihar Odisha the, the the these states Bengal Bihar Odisha inka halat objectively Rajasthan vagara se kharab zyada kyu hua they were directly run by the british other places were still run by the princely states for a longer period of time jo 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 rajya seedha british ke hath mein chala gaya wo aur bhi gadde mein chala gaya aur aur jaldi chala gaya gadde mein Show oh, Shavya is online. Shavya saying I had read the Iskand's Gita translation. Tried two to four times, hardly ever was able to go beyond the second chapter. So now I am now I am reading the translation of Jeffrey Armstrong. अच्छा ये कौन है? वैसे Gita Press का English Gita किसी के पास है क्या? वो तो online नहीं मिल रहा है. मुझे कहीं पे जा के खरीदना होगा. Or but I have decided that since I had I have a friend who went to Iskand and gifted me three or four books from Iskand. सो so, वो मुझे पढ़ना तो है ही गिफ्ट दे दिया है तो आई आई शुड रीड इट और आल आल अंडरस्टैंड द अंडरस्टैंड द इसको ऑन परस्पेक्टिव बेटर क्योंकि आफ्टर ऑल दे आर नॉट एनिमीज ऑफ हिंदुइज्म बिकॉज आफ्टर ऑल दे आर नॉट गोइंग अराउंड सेइंग दैट वी शुड किल पीपल हु बिलीव हिंदुइज्म इन अ सर्टेन वे सो आल जस्ट फाइंड आउट देयर पॉइंट इन मोर डिटेल सो आई हैव द भगवद गीता आई हैव मेनी बुक्स फ्रॉम इसकॉन विच आई विल रीड रीड फ्रॉम माई चैनल एंड रीड दैट एंड भगवद गीता एज वेल सो एनी वे लेट्स एंड द लाइफ स्ट्रीम हियर गाइज This was a great chapter. अगले दिन का चैप्टर क्या है बुद्धिस्ट फिलोसफी अगले दिन न्यू बुद्धिस्ट को आने दो 
सिखाएंगे उनको असली बुद्धिज्म लोग कंफ्यूज हो जाएंगे देख के कहीं पे बोल रहा है कि बुद्धिज्म बुद्धिस्ट वालों को छोड़ो फालतू में क्यों झगड़ा करते हैं और कहीं पे बुद्धिस्ट फिलोसफी हम डिस्कस करेंगे कहीं पे बुद्धिस्ट कास्टिज्म डिस्कस करेंगे अच्छा मजा आएगा इन लोगों के साथ थैंक्स अलॉट गाइज फॉर फर्स्ट टाइम ऑनलाइन एट सच लेट इन द नाइट दिस वॉज अ ग्रेट डिस्कशन आई ट्राई टू मेक सम क्लिपिंग्स आउट ऑफ दिस द थिंग्स वी लर्न हियर एज वेल सो सी यू टुमारो टुमारो मोस्ट प्रोबली इफ आई एम एबल टू कम ऑनलाइन आई डू मनस्मृति गुड नाइट गाइज